This video will explain how to wait for objects, windows, and processes in Test Complete. Test conditions may differ from one test run to another, and it's often necessary to wait until a specific process launches or until a certain window becomes active. For example, when a test acquires a reference to a process or window object, or when it activates an object, that object may not be available immediately. Likewise, when a test changes the state of a window on screen, uh, that change may not occur instantaneously, and that can cause problems during test runs. So to avoid these problems, you can make test complete wait for an object to become available, or you can delay test execution for a specified period of time. Here's how to do it. First of all, let me demonstrate what happens if test complete cannot find a desired object during the test run. And in this example, I'm going to use a test that I've pre created previously. I'm just going to click this run test button here. And this test is just going to invoke a particular application called the orders application. And the app has been invoked, and now you can see Test Complete is waiting for it. But then suddenly the test fails, and the expected orders application gets launched after the test has already failed. So let's take a look at the test log that Test Complete generated. You can see that the invoke app process was called, but the process that I need for my test, the orders process, wasn't found. And since the orders process wasn't found, none of the objects that I need to actually perform my test could be located, and thus the test failed. So what happened here? Well, by default, test complete will only wait for processes or windows for up to 10 seconds. And if it takes longer than 10 seconds for those controls or windows to be displayed, then test complete errors out. So that 10 second time can be changed by adjusting the auto wait timeout property, which is located here. I'm going to double click on my project name, come down to properties, and then I'm going to select playback. And you can see right here, this auto wait timeout is the amount of time that we're going to wait for a control to be displayed on screen or for a process before we decide that we're just going to move on. So if we wanted to, we could update that value to a higher number. But it's also possible to set individual timeouts for individual operations inside your tests. So to do that, we're going to take advantage of a timeout parameter. So let's have a look at how to do that. I'm going to flip back to my test. And what I want to do is add the timeout column to my keyword test grid here. So to do that, I'm just going to right click on the grid headers here. I'm going to select field chooser. And now I'm going to add this auto wait timeout to my test. And you'll see that the columns are filled with the default value to start with. That means we're going to wait for the amount of time as specified in that auto timeout property I showed you just a moment ago. But here we can specify individual timeouts for operations. So what I'm going to do is adjust the action right here for this main menu operation. So I'm guessing it's going to take about 20 seconds for my orders application to be invoked. So I'm going to change this value. I'm just going to type inside of it. I'm going to put in 20,000. And that is 20 seconds. Now if the process comes up before those 20 seconds have expired, then Test Complete will recognize it and keep going. Now to make sure that other test objects will be available during the run, we can also specify custom timeouts for other operations. For example, I want to wait for 15 seconds before I try to work with the uh, open window. So I'll just put in 15,000 for there. And now that I've made these changes, we can run the test again. So now Test Complete kicks off. We have our first process being invoked. And now here it is, there's the order process, and now we're going to go through and perform the actions necessary for our test. So by specifying that auto wait timeout property, we were able to accurately replay our tests. And here's our successful test log right now. Now I'll demonstrate how you can specify the required timeouts in script units. So I'm just going to flip over here to my script test. And what you're looking at right now is the same test as that keyword test was performing, but now it's just in script mode. And if we played this test back, we'd see that, once again, Test Complete would not be able to find the orders process. So I want to specify an individual timeout for each method that's running that process. So, so what we can do is use special scripting methods that wait for processes and objects on screen to be rendered. So my first one here is going to be here on line 8. And what I'm going to do 
is change this sys.process line to sys.waitProcess. And then I'm also going to add in a timeout value right here. So this command is going to tell test complete to wait for that orders process to be live for up to 20 seconds. And if it comes live before those 20 seconds are up, the test will just go on no problem. Now if you want to wait for a particular object or window to be launched or opened, you can use the wait window and wait winforms object methods in your scripts. For example, in our test, we're going to replace the win window method with the wait window method so that we're waiting for the particular uh, open dialog to be displayed. So right here on line 12, I'm going to change this to orders.waitWindow and we'll put in and what this is saying here is this is saying find the first instance of the open window and this is saying wait for up to 15 seconds for that window to be displayed. So we're telling test complete to wait for this particular window by using the wait window command. But now if we want to wait for a particular object on screen, well there's a command for that as well. Right here on line 14 you can see we have a winforms object called orders view. Well let's say we wanted to wait for 17 seconds for that control to be displayed. We can change this to a wait winforms object command and then we can add the timeout parameter right here and 17,000 means uh, that we'll wait for 17 seconds. Test complete also provides other wait methods that allow you to wait for windows and objects of applications that are created with specific development tools. For example, you can wait for a specific WPF control, you can wait for a specific uh, Java Swing object, and you can refer to the test complete documentation to get the full list of those types of commands. Sometimes when you record a test, you may want to play it back at exactly the same speed as it was recorded. And Test Complete allows you to do that by enabling the real-time mode recording option. So to do that, I'm going to come up here to Tools, Options. I'm going to come over here to Engines, Recording. And I'm going to check this real-time mode box. And we'll click OK. And now with this option enabled, Test Complete's going to record the time that I wait in between actions. And we'll insert those waits into our recorded tests as a delay method. So let's go ahead and record a test right now. I'm going to click the record a new test button. I'm going to invoke my application here. And now it's going to take a certain amount of time for that window to be loaded. Okay, here's my application. Now I'm just going to create a simple test case here. I'm going to load up my customer data. And now let's say we want to work with the Susan McLaren order here. I'm going to right click on Susan McLaren, click edit order. And I'm going to wait for a second or two here and then I'm going to click the family album product. And then I'll come down here and I'll type in a zip code. And I'll wait another second or two and then I'll click American Express. And I'm just going to cancel out of this and stop recording. All right, now test completes generated our test case and you'll notice that in between each action there is a delay statement that's been inserted. So we invoked our application and then we waited for a little over 28 seconds. Then we clicked file open and we waited a little over five seconds. And then we selected our data file and we waited about two seconds. So test complete will play back this test at the same speed at which it was recorded. Now, if you need to, you can always add a delay operation to your test by hand after the fact. And to do that, just come over here to the miscellaneous tab grab the delay operation and put it anywhere you need and then just specify the amount of time you want to wait so 2000 milliseconds is two seconds and now we'll wait for an additional amount of time right there and it's worth mentioning that if you record a script with real-time mode enabled you'll also get those delay commands added automatically for you as you see right here uh, after every action that's being performed there's a corresponding delay command that's been inserted. As you can see Test Complete provides you with some really easy ways to slow down test execution to ensure that it's going to stay in time with your application. If you have any questions please don't hesitate to contact us at the email addresses on your screen and we wish you luck and hope you enjoy automating your tests with Test Complete.